We have started recording the Asia Pacific call for February 10th, 2021. Welcome everyone. Hi. <laughs> I, think you, I think you're the only one that can see the agenda, Matt, so. <laughs> really? Like, you, can you, you, Elizabeth, can you see it? Yeah, I, Matt's sharing his screen though in the Zoom call, so. Um, maybe we can work from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll make you a co-host and then maybe you can share your screen. I'm sharing it. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This is my issue. Or my the Zoom share always hides behind five other windows for some reason for me. All right, I can see it. And so we wanted to uh, highlight some of the working group efforts from the risk working group here, uh, partly because I think the, the central focus of the risk working group has pivoted a little bit towards understanding both upstream and downstream software dependencies. These are um, upstream uh, would be libraries that we depend on. Is that right? I always get that mixed up. Basically libraries that your project depends on and understanding an enumeration of what those libraries are, or what the, what other software is, is it that your software depends on, and getting an understanding of the health and sustainability of those dependencies, as well as the nested depth of those dependencies. So it sort of turtles all the way down. If I depend on a package that depends on a package that depends on a package, the aim of these metrics is to enumerate those packages that the software that you're building depends on. Um, there's also an effort to look at that in the other direction, where if I'm building a package and other people import it or use it, what are the other packages that depend on my software? And this is, of course, very important when we're building either inner source or out so, um, open source software. And, and that's, that's the focus of the risk working group right now. Um, Matt or Elizabeth, is there, is there other stuff about that that we want to share? Um, yeah, so I just, I thought maybe, you know, we talked about this in this call before mm -hmm. and just whether or not dependencies are an issue for, for folks, say, at Huawei or on this call. So is tracking upstream and downstream dependencies something that you necessarily care about? And that was going to kind of lead into this next issue on the agenda and how much we want to work on that here. So King or Willem? Mm -hmm. Oh, for, for the Rask part? <laughs> I... Yeah, so with respect to dependencies. Let me get that in there. I can't, I, I'll take notes. I'll finish the, I'll figure out the permissions oh, thing yeah. after. I can't do all these things. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, for the dependency, I, I guess um, there's a bunch of, uh, um, uh, uh, currently we, we saw uh, if there's uh, any uh, C, CVE issue, um, we, we need to upgrade the, the third parties uh, dependencies. Uh, and I I saw a lot of uh, uh, requests uh, recently, and uh, especially uh, uh, even for uh, if, um, for for my experience is that look that uh, we uh, we get the uh, the uh, CVE uh, feedback and uh, uh, need to check the 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 third dependency um, and uh, even. Uh, it, it could be more complicated uh, because we have a uh, open source project and uh, we got an uh, uh, issue uh, which is complaining about uh, the CVE, but uh, it, it looked like uh, um, uh, there's a dependence and dependency. So, so the, the challenge part is we need to um, hunt down or we need to manage uh, the uh, uh, to, to find out the key, um, uh, the third party um, 
uh, which we need to fix. So, so I I think this could be a um, um, uh, a dependency uh, management uh, uh, issue. Um, it, it's really like uh, uh, GitHub provide this kind of uh, service. Uh, uh, the it's looked like that there's a, a robot will uh, check your uh, the project's dependency and they will uh, inform you uh, if there's uh, any security issues uh, happens. And uh, uh, <laughs> in most of the cases, we just need to upgrade the third parties, but we need to get uh, to to to, uh, to get the information and uh, do the actions. So from my perspective, I think. Um, uh, the metrics here could be um, how much CV uh, uh, issue we, we we found, and uh, how many projects uh, uh, could be affect, uh, uh, could be uh, affected, and uh, uh, later on how much projects uh, upgrade the the, the de dependencies. So this is uh, roughly ideas I have. I, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't uh, join the work group meeting, so I, I'm not sure you guys already know about that or if there's all some solutions. Yeah, no, this is, this, is, this is great. And this is partly why we have the Asia Pacific call to help <laughs> kind of bridge <laughs> between conversations that may be occurring in one place, just so um, we're all on the same page. Um, so I, CVEs have come up and I think they've, uh, Sean, can you speak a little bit to the CVE discussions that have been occurring at all in the uh, risk working group? Remind me what CVE is. The vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and this really dovetails with some of the work that's being done in security. Right? CV, uh, what is CV again? Vo vulnerability enumerators, yeah. common vulnerability so, enumerators. Yeah, right. So there's a database that Nest right. maintains and you do searches based on kind of canonical names and they tell you if there's any known vulnerabilities reported with that particular package. Yeah. And I don't know if um, Git does this, but GitHub provides a lot of that information now automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, they scan, they scan your repository and identify vulnerabilities that exist in your code um, automatically for you. But knowing knowing the vulnerabilities that exist is um, something that we would integrate with the dependencies analysis. So if, for example, we understood the dependencies that are declared in a piece of software, we're at a certain version, which they often are uh, because people declare the version that they've compiled it successfully with, then an, a, sort of a, an add-on to the identification of these dependencies would be to compare them against a vulnerabilities database and report not only what your dependencies are, but also what the security vulnerabilities associated what those dependencies are. And that would be a, a reference to the NIST database that Matt alluded to. So I know that if I share my screen here again, um, let's see how to do this again. So Willem, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, in the risk working group, these are, so this is the, spreadsheet that we use to kind of track metrics that we've been developing. I think maybe you've seen this before. Maybe not. No, no, no. Okay. So basically, just a real quick explanation. Across the bottom are the different working groups. So okay. say DNI, risk, evolution, value, common. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then within each of the working groups, they work on the development of metrics that can help enumerate um, particular concerns around that working group. So for example, metrics associated with the determination of value, metrics associated with the determination of the evolution of a project, metrics associated with the diversity and inclusion of a project. And so we have the risk working group and you can see here that you see row 14 where it says security and then business risk, 
code quality, and licensing. These are what are called focus areas. And then within each focus area, we have particular metrics that help provide insight on that particular focus area. So I think what you're talking about is a security risk. That would be at least how we've categorized it in the past. Uh -huh. um, you can see that we have, well, actually known vulnerabilities is probably the metric that you're talking about, which would be associated with, with CVEs, you know, reported CVEs. Um, so this is something that we could start working on um, kind of here, articulating what this metric would mean, like how do we identify vulnerabilities in, in software? Um, and then we have software vulnerabilities. Do, does anybody know the difference between these two? Software vulnerabilities and known vulnerabilities, why we would differentiate between these two? For all the meetings that you weren't on, and could somebody tell me <laughs> what we were thinking at the time? <laughs> I think I think software vulnerabilities might be things that are not necessarily part of a security vulnerability or a security vulnerability that's been identified that hasn't yet made the NIST database or wasn't judged to be significant enough for the NIST database, but might apply to a particular use case that a company okay. is in. Okay. Could it, hey, Sean, could it be something like um, uh, one of your files has the password in it and has been checked into GitHub? Yeah. Because I know that there are scanners that will pick that stuff up, but it doesn't really show up as a CVE per se. Is that what? Yeah, the that, that would be, that'd be an example. Um, although GitHub now complete, complete, after the Stack Exchange debacle in 2019, GitHub now automatically erases uh, basically invalidates every token that you check into a public repository. <laughs> I did not know that. That is excellent. All right. Well, I learned that the hard way <laughs> by accidentally checking a log file in that had uh, keys in it. So I'm, I'm looking, I, does anybody know about uh, Google? Google open source has recently, okay, so working with the NIST database is super hard. Like it's not really easy to get um, the, the naming conventions that they require to do searches in the NIST database is really problematic. Um, and so I, is anybody familiar with the efforts that Google is doing right now with respect to trying to streamline the CVE process? Sean or I am, Daniel? I am not. Sonia okay. has spoken of it briefly, but she hasn't given us a lot of details. Okay, who? Okay, who had mentioned this? Uh, um, so I'm sorry, Sophia. Okay, Vargas. Sophia Vargas. Gotcha. Okay, let me do a little bit of searching here. Um, but I, I think there's something that Google is trying to do to improve the findability of CVEs. I think right now your desire to have them and the ability to find them is, is far away. <laughs> I think it's not. And um, so I think Google's trying to, to bridge that gap. And it might be something that Sean, like Augur, kind of puts on a roadmap down the road, yeah. if, it, yeah. if it can be improved, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Um, I'll do a little bit of searching here in just a second. So if I come back, is there anything else that the folks on the call are interested in? Let's see, Chrome. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I'm sorry about my internet. <laughs> I mean that my internet is not so good enough. Uh, so uh, I think uh, in dependence area, uh, we should uh, metrics from uh, three, three, three aspects. Uh, one is a uh, vulnerability, and uh, second is a uh, license. You know the. Uh, we we want to uh, because the dependency they have diff, uh, this have several several level several layers. Uh, one 
integrate what open source software component integrate in another uh, component. So uh, about the two license, uh, we must to we want to, to check the compatibility of the two license and uh, the father father uh, father software license and the son software license between them. You know, I think it's uh, it's difficult for for us to do this because I I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, there is no and there's an, uh, there's not any tools about the license compatibility, and uh, the third is the life cycle of the of the uh, life cycle of the component. Uh, you know the uh, because uh, the bottle uh, the bottle the bottle light uh, the software uh, the the age of the software. Uh, is very old, so uh, the uh, the up uh, they lack they, they lack the owners, you know, owners one uh, one uh, one lay one lay one lay owners. So in the inside of the uh, component, uh, the, the, the maybe the it's, it's re, the component released several years ago, and uh, uh, we don't know uh, is there anybody to maintain uh, the software in uh, open source community. I think uh, uh, we want to. Uh, I think uh, uh, we can matrix the the life cycle, the age of the uh, each layer of the uh, dependency. Yeah. So a couple of comments and maybe a question too. Um, so license compatibility. So we do have metrics right now and tooling that can not perfectly, but identify the licenses that are evident in known pieces of software, right? So it doesn't necessarily tell you issues of compatibility, but it tells you what licenses are present. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we can uh, metrics uh, the, uh, the, the fair license and the component license, but uh, uh, some licenses, they told us uh, you need to use the advertisement in in it and uh, uh, distribute when you distribute some license ask you master to put, sure, <laughs> put sure. mine yeah 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 it's not a compatibility yeah i think uh, if the dependency uh, the father component and the song component they, they integrate each other i think the best company compatibility uh, sorry compatibility compatibility is is the, uh, the issue i think yeah is there so how do you do this right now at Huawei? How do you determine compatibility? Is it just by yeah. a person, a smart person, just looks yeah. at it and tries to figure it out? <laughs> yeah, yeah Matthew. Okay. Anyway, don't uh, we don't have any tools, tooling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Has anybody because... ever seen a tool that kind of does this, or even a like a spreadsheet <laughs> that's like if using you know, MIT don't use these other, like at least a starter guide. Has anybody, I've never seen anything like that. Has anybody on the call seen I, anything I like have, that? I have, I just need to find it because um, it's been a couple of years now, but um, Phil Hack, who uh, used to work at um, Microsoft and then worked at GitHub, developed a really great tool, but I have to find it. So let me search on that for a minute. Because something like that might be super helpful just mm -hmm. even if we helped maintain it, because I know that discovery is one thing, but compatibility is another thing. Yeah, um, and in, uh, in Apache, we have uh, uh, three catalog um, uh, license. So, so uh, uh, the catalog A, uh, we can use this freely, just like a, a pre-BSD, a BSD, MIT, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the permissive uh, license, the catalog uh, B is uh, more like uh, we cannot change the code, but we can use the binary things uh, such as uh, Eclipse uh, license or Mozilla license. Uh, for the LGPL, um, <laughs> I need to look, look it up. Um, uh, for the GPL and the LGPL, uh, it, uh, it's a, a catalog X. So normally we cannot uh, uh, do the um, bound, uh, bound um, uh, cannot include that dependency uh, in, in our release. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, so, 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 uh, as I mentioned, basic... <laughs> and, and we 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 try to figure uh, it out, but uh, normally we have a, a long list of the uh, software, uh, uh, the third party de dependencies, yep. and we go through them. And but I I, I didn't find uh, there's uh, automatic tools to do that, but uh, we. We can use the dependency management to uh, to, to generate the um, the third party dependency, and then we can inspect the the, the dependency list. So in this way, we can tell uh, if this third party dependency is good to go, or okay. or, or if we need to uh, remove it. Okay, so what you had, <clears throat> excuse me, so what you had described is kind of a, a, a use list, <laughs> not, a, you know, not a use list, but a use list uh -huh. um, that you can use. And it sounded like it was basically just moving from permissive to, to copy left. And if it's permissive, it's okay. And if it's copy left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but then maybe less so. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the perspective we have is we, uh, uh, because Apache uh, Software Foundation's project to use the Apache uh, license, yeah. so it's a permissive, uh, permissive uh, license. We need to uh, make sure the downstream users can still use this yep. uh, permissive uh, software. But uh, okay. if we, uh, if the project is use uh, uh, GPL, <laughs> it, it, it could be much easier for them to choose the third party. Uh, Dependency, the, the, the license compatibility it should uh, should be uh, more easier, but for the uh, permissive uh, project, we need to be careful. Okay, so I know that Augur right now one of the parts that is in Augur is kind of an SPDX plugin, oh. yeah. and um, like it can do <clears throat> it could do discovery. Kind of what you're talking about, Willem. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. could do discovery of known packages, but it couldn't answer questions of compatibility to what King is talking about. So mm -hmm. it could give you a list of 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 permissive, weak copy left, copy left. I mean, those could be categorized. But if you have I mean, a canonical list of what you want, what licenses you accept and which ones you don't, you could build a custom report to just show that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like how uh, uh, a list, uh, a white list and the black list. So, so, so if there's uh, some uh, uh, license uh, we are not allowed to use, maybe the tool can can can. Uh, since the warning message or, or just complain about that? Yeah, so we've actually, so yes, um, there would be, have to be some tooling that would be built around the output that would actually warn you <laughs> that there's something wrong <laughs> or something to take a closer look at. But um, I know that the component that's in Augur, the SPDX component um, can at least was originally built to kind of do that, to not only do yeah. the scans, but then um, it, it, like stop a build process or provide an email that says there's an issue with a particular license. So this is something that, that we could take a look at. Um, but again, that won't, that won't do compatibility checking. So if you have 20 licenses in a package, or 20 licenses across numerous packages, it won't necessarily tell you that these two things are okay to have together. And these two things are not okay to have together. Yeah. And if Elizabeth could find that, that would be cool. Yeah. So I have, I see. I have a faith well, that I she will find it. I found what I was thinking of, but it was not what we were looking for. So ah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it, it's a great tool though, if you're looking to figure out what kind of license you want to apply to your software package, but um, yeah, it doesn't really help the other way. Like compared oh, sorry. to licenses. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it is clear the... on like what licenses mean and stuff. So there might be something there that we need there that we can use. I don't know. But it doesn't seem not. like such an overwhelming tool to think about compatibility checking. Anyway. Um, 
Okay, so so we do have s metrics that are based on licensing already. So we have already built those. Um, and like I said, tooling is moving, moving that way as well. Um, I, I do have one question. So this is my question then I guess, and we can talk about age of components too. Um, how at Huawei, how are you able to build your dependency structure? This is a challenge. So how do you know what upstream packages you are depending on? Like, how are you able to do that discovery process? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, a different language have a different uh, tools of the, of, of the dependency. You know, for example, uh, uh, Maven, Maven. Uh, we, uh, the example uh, with Maven, uh, Maven has a, a POM, POM file. Mm -hmm. So we can analyze it. And uh, it is the, we, we analyze the, uh, the component and uh, we can see which uh, component okay. is depends on what. Yeah, after it, uh, we can build a tree like, like the dependency. Yes, uh, after we know each component, we can uh, from the from the uh, uh, from the uh, community find out the license of the component, and uh, we have a uh, uh, vulnerability the database, and uh, to an announce the, our product, uh, what uh, vulnerability you have mentioned, yeah. Okay, so in that case, just pulling off of the POM file yeah, and then kind of assembling a list and then doing a license and vulnerability or essentially building the dependency tree. And then from there, you could ask questions. Okay. Yes. Um, are, there other, are there other situations where you don't have a POM file and you're able to do this? Uh, I think uh, every language has a POM file. Exactly. Uh, C, C, C okay. language, yeah, and the C language, it it, it don't have the, uh, it don't have the pump file. Okay, but, but you you may need to use the uh, make file to to yeah. to to go through the uh, dependency. I I think we uh, need to uh, have a, a, a meta database to. Uh, Describe or or just help us to um, manage uh, uh, to 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 know uh, about the third part dependency and uh, then if there's a vulnerability uh, issue come out we can uh, go through them and uh, look it up and uh, I I think we we are we are try to build in these kinds of uh, tools. Uh, but it's really a dependence. Uh, 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 it, it's a, a language uh, uh, um, uh, specific. Yeah. And <laughs> and do you do you try to build this into, um, say, a, a nightly build process, or are you doing this? You know what I mean. Like when are when you grab the POM file? Is this just individually, or is it part of? an automated process. Yeah, it, it could be better if we uh, have a nightly build, but Quincy, I, I, I'm not sure uh, if we ha already have that, but uh, uh, currently I, I, I can see, uh, uh, I, I, I got some uh, messages from my colleagues and uh, they just, uh, Inform us uh, there's a, a vulnerability uh, issues and we need to upgrade the third party dependency. So okay. I think we just built the channel, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's more like a, a human <laughs> human work, not the, the <laughs> automatic tool. Gotcha. Work. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because we want to upgrade the dependency, we must uh, to check the API is API changed. So mm -hmm. there's a, another co compatibility is the, uh, the issue, yeah. So, so, so Sean, how is this differing from what 
is being talked about in risk in terms of building the i think it's largely it's it's a different different articulation of the same basic questions okay that that you know we all of the all of this is sort of under the broad umbrella of dependencies and vulnerabilities work which is a, so I, I do think it's related i think it's uh, articulated a little bit different and maybe some of the inner sourcing oriented concerns are a little bit different but um, you know, licensing has long been considered a risk and knowing the licensing of your dependencies is a natural extension. So has the discovery process been talked about in the same way? We've looked at a number of pieces of software that do the discovery and so we haven't gotten into that concrete piece of how. So I'd, I would put that under the how, heading of how are we going to identify these things? And, you know, Augur has some ways of doing it, but, you know, this is um, one of the one of the tricks with dependencies in our discussions. And one of the reasons our discussion of them went on for a couple months is that there's a lot to, lot to understand and a lot of common understanding to generate in the discussion. It's people, nobody, no organization or individual comes into this with a clear understanding of exactly what they mean, or if they know what they mean, it may be that they, they use the same words to express something slightly different. And so working, working through the nuance uh, took us a little bit of time. And maybe an approach here would be to just dive directly into the specific concerns in this working group. And as I understand them and others from the risk group who can participate understand them, we get real specific about these concerns and then weave them back into the larger risk working group. I mean, that might be a process approach as opposed to spending two months like we did in risk, sort of getting a common understanding. You know, it might, this might be a case where it's better to dive in. So Sean, is this the tooling that you were talking about? I put it in the chat as well, the OWASP stuff. Yeah, OWASP is absolutely part of our, um, I've attended a couple of their working group meetings. Um, OWASP has definitely come up. I mean, you know this, is, this, is, this group is actually building tools and software and common understanding I think the difference between this work or the sort of where this work is distinct from the chaos work is that chaos looks at dependencies and the implications and effects of these dependencies from a much broader overall project health perspective, you know, including things like lib year, you know, like how old is my oldest dependency. So OWASP is, I would, I think the work that they are doing is a subset of where we will eventually end up and we will in all likelihood, um, unapologetically leverage some of the work that they're doing and build chaos metrics around them. So is OWASP, is it a, is it tooling that's provided or is it like a way of thinking? You know what I mean? Like, do they have tools that actually do this? Software composition analysis oh, it says tool that attempts to detect publicly uh -huh. disclosed vulnerabilities. There are a number of tools that exist. I don't know if OWASP itself goes, goes beyond the tools, but um, the under external resources on this page are some of the tools that we've talked about, like OLO. Where is, is this? Uh, on the right hand, like scroll down under project classification. If you keep going, there's a heading called external resources. And Keep going, so, keep going. I don't see it, but um, scroll up. It's above leaders. Scroll. There you go. External oh, resources. here. So, okay. like GitHub, like I mentioned earlier, does some notifications now. Um, Jenkins, Olo. Olo is the one that Dave Wheeler has talked about um, a good deal. So there's a lot of there's a lot of tool building happening in this space. I think. One of my concerns, which I've expressed, is that a lot of the tool building in this space is venture capital led. 
and there's oddly and not enough, not a lot of um, robust open source projects outside of GitHub that are that are really looking at this vulnerability space. And so I think there's a real important um, building piece that Chaos and other enterprises like Augur can contribute to or, or, or Grimoire Lab um, <clears throat> to build tools that are more open source. Um, and, I, and I say that because of all the things that we've built and that Grimoire Lab has built, this is not the hardest technical hill <laughs> to climb. So, I mean, I think it's feasible that we could incorporate tools that accomplish some of the OWASP aims um, without a uh, billion dollars in venture capital. Although I would certainly accept a billion dollars in venture capital. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a very, it, there's a very weird dichotomy between the level of difficulty and the money that's following it in this case. So is this, like, I, th I think at some point, I think we're gonna end up talking about uh, vulnerabilities and dependencies for this entire call, which is okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. is, so is, is there some, some way that in the chaos project, we can actually start making this happen, not only from a metrics perspective, because we can define the metrics, right? Like we need to understand vulnerabilities and upstream dependencies. We need to understand licenses and we need to understand the compatibility of licenses. We can develop those metrics, but at some point we need to start <clears throat> thinking about how those metrics are put into place. You know, Just like the yeah. classic things we always talk about, right? Like yeah. metrics by themselves are interesting but not terribly deployable. We ultimately need tools that will do this. So I, I mean, I think, one way to do it would be to, you know, there's, I guess there's three, there's sort of three options, four options, maybe option one would be, we, we get some financial support for, for Gordmore Lab to try to implement a pilot of this. We, we get a financial support for Augur to implement uh, a pilot of something like this. And I, I mentioned financial support only because although it's a lower level of difficulty, it's going to require a pretty committed developer for whoever does it. We could also look at building a service that Chaos provides that actually does this and that Grimoire Lab and Augur could both access. Um, a, a fourth option would be as if a company wants to take this on as an open source endeavor, they could then open source it and we could leverage it. So there's, there's ways to get this done. I mean, when I look at the Augur roadmap and when I talk to Georg about the Grimoire Lab horizon, I mean, I think both of these projects don't have an individual with the bandwidth to dive into this right now. Um, so we need to think about how are we, if this is really important, and I think it is, we, we just need to start thinking about, okay, how do we scale uh, chaos and the software component of chaos to address these concerns? And I think, I think people like Dave Wheeler and Kate Stewart and, and Sophia Vargas would be good sounding boards to ask about this in terms of, you know, Dave, Dave's advice has been, well, there's so much venture capital. Um, I think Kate and Sophia are more interested in seeing something like this built. And Sophia, like you mentioned earlier, Google might be working on something. It's just not been clearly defined for us at this point. So like, you, I mean, Google's kept a lot of stuff internal and I think they're starting to open source it. So maybe, maybe I could have a side conversation with Sophia about, about that. I can take that as a to-do just to sort of check the pulse of David, Sophia, and Kate about tool building in this space. Because even if it's just like prototyping, like still, we just have to start somewhere, right? Yeah, like I mean, yeah. And, and I think I think the reason that I, I pause at diving right into it and putting sure. it up and having working on it right now is I think there's a certain there's there's a lot of commitment to understanding the space that I don't think I think you know we have people like Matt Snell who have done enough work in licensing that I think he could dive into something like this, but he's also another person who's pretty committed. Yep. <laughs> um, Elizabeth, do you have thoughts on this at all or? 
I'm just listening mostly. Um, yeah, it, it's tricky uh, to to have that the, that those resources to develop something like that. Um, I don't know. I think yeah, I like the idea of just checking with the others in the risk group to see what they think about that and if you know, because we don't know what people are working on really. So yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna send a individual notes to Dave, Kate, and Sophia. just to see kind of what the landscape is. I just, I feel like this is like just a gigantic issue that so many organizations care about. Yeah. And to, to King's yeah. point, like dependencies is the start and then enumerate, and to Willem's point, enumerating the CVEs, the licensing, and then also kind of the activity, just the the liveliness of the projects that that you're also relying on, even if their licenses are good and they have no vulnerabilities. Um, just whether or not that project is sustainable. And so like the demand for this is just enormous. Everybody talks about this, but somehow there seems to be a gap in um, in the ability to get this into practice. Like it, I think it still se seems very manual sometimes. It still seems, and I don't understand why that's the case. I mean, I guess I do. I don't mean to say like. The, the gap is the the gap is twofold. One is just the tool builders for this, for chaos have not done this before. I mean, Augur comes the closest with license scanning. And so would have the, it have a piece of software that could actually, we could start from. Um, but the other piece is that doing this well requires maintenance of a uh, data set, a curated data set. So we can start with Nest, but and this won't be enough to capture vulnerabilities that are not in the security database. So there'll need to be an ongoing curation of a data set, which, uh, you know, it's something that could be a community effort, but then there's also, as Dave Wheeler's mentioned, this ethic in the security community where there's very, a lot of thought that goes into when do you make the, the when do you make the existence of the vulnerability visibly visible publicly because there's a, a tendency in the security community to want to have it fixed before or want to know what the fix is before you announce it publicly not that people don't know about it but there's this gatekeeping of when you make it available so you there's a, there's like a process and a culture in the security community around that that we would I think need to be sensitive to so that we didn't raise their ire or accidentally undermine the security and stability of the internet. I think that's an excellent point, Sean, because you, we certainly don't wanna um, do the opposite of what we're trying to do <laughs> by making things more vulnerable, you know, bringing attention to, hey, here's this big security hole <laughs> and uh, not be able to fix that. So I think that's an excellent point, well made. So how do we, based on what Willem and King have brought up and based on what's going on in the risk working group, um, and we have two minutes to figure this out, how do we roadmap a solution <laughs> to this? <laughs> right? I, I, I don't think so. We, we can come out to the solution uh, right away, but uh, I think uh, this could be a, a interesting topics for the uh, people to join. And uh, I, I think this could be a bridge to help us to uh, understand the issues and find out the, the solution. And, and we can see a lot of uh, other projects also interesting about that. How about we start the conversation and uh, to find out if we can uh, integrate. And from, uh, from my experience, I work on the uh, uh, application integration <laughs> business for a while, and I think if we can talk about uh, 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 can come out uh, uh, API or, or, or some things, we can work together. And uh, I I think uh, maybe the metrics could be a uh, a good thing for the uh, dashboard, and uh, it could be used internally and uh, to to help the uh, OSPO or, or, or the manager team to, to know about uh, the, the, the situation. And uh, if we can uh, connect to the other uh, uh, open source projects um, or 
some kinds of database. Maybe uh, we can get it uh, running and uh, have a, a general idea of mm -hmm. uh, this kind of thing. So I, like so, so I, I, I think this topic could be open for a while, but uh, we need to get awareness of the others. Maybe they can help us or maybe we can uh, build the tool ourselves for to 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 help others, but mm -hmm. I think there could be a um, uh, it could be a good business, especially for the for the security <laughs> company. Yes. It could be a good business. I agree. <laughs> um, King, did you have any comments? That's great, Willem. Yeah, I I agree with Willem. Uh, so you know uh. Okay, uh, cost one minute. I want to share my screen to all, all of you. I, yeah, yeah, let I? me stop my share. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, man. Okay. Uh, sorry. Can you, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, you can see, okay. This is uh, the license list. So uh, I, I, now I focus. Uh, on the license uh, risk uh, these days, you you can see this uh, this uh, table is a license uh, list. Uh, I almost uh, uh, gather seventy seventy yeah. license here. Yeah, uh, this is the SPDX, the standard license name here. Yep. And uh, uh, I I separate its uh, each license into three three de demo. Uh, the green one is the right. You have the right to commercial use, distribute, modify, kitchen, and patent use, and uh, private use. The second one, uh, the second uh, uh, demo, uh, the second domain is uh, blue. It, it means uh, the obligation <coughs> of the license, you know? Uh, you, you must open it, you know, to disclose yeah. it, uh, noti uh, notice, and uh, the this license is in the SAS, in the, you can say GPL 3.0. Uh, this yeah. license, you must uh, uh, open your uh, software, uh, source code. And uh, the last uh, is the limit, limitation of the license in the right, right color. Uh, the abilities, trademark use and the warranty. Yes, this is the license type. You can say it's uh, permissive SAS, coffee left and the copy Couple left weak and uh, couple mm -hmm. left strong, and uh, this is uh, free. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, maybe approved by FSF or OSI. You know, uh, yeah. This is uh, uh, the list. Uh, I I wanted to uh, develop uh, tools uh, uh, after the scan and uh, told the each developer or maintainer of the repo uh, what uh, is your right, what's your obligation and what's your limitation yeah uh, uh, after I finish this table I can dedicate uh, dedicated to chaos project I think it can be reach the Argo, Argo's uh, metrics uh, the tools yeah I can dedicate it to share yeah that would be great because I think that would be helpful in terms of kind of the columns that you have have you seen there's a chat do you see the chat I put in there there's a link in the <laughs> chat. Uh, sorry, is, this is a private uh, private link. I can. No, no, no. Uh, I put I, a, I put a, I put a link in the chat sorry, for you. I, that, I apologize. That might... I'm running the next chaos meeting after this, so I am going to depart for my brief. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>